Article 39 on the petition of Victor R. DeMarco and Richard A. Ballou and more than 25 other legal voters of the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate $25,000 as a donation to the Fisher House Foundation, Inc. The Fisher House program is a unique private-public partnership that supports milita America's military families. The foundation builds and donates comfort homes on the grounds of major military and VA medical centers. These homes enable family members to be close to loved ones at the most stressful time during hospitalizations for unexpected illness, disease, or injury. The housing program has served more than 142,000 individuals since the program's inception in 1990 and nearly 3.6 million days of lodging. Estimated savings for the families has been $167 million in lodging fees, subsistence, and transportation expense. The American Institute of Philanthropy, now referred to as Charity Watch, rated the Fisher Foundation a plus with 96% of every dollar received used directly to build homes. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 401, recommended by the Budget Committee 6 to 4 to 2. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2014 tax impact is 9 tenths of 1 cent per $1,000. Evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 39? Moved by Mr. Ballou, uh, seconded by Mr. Emmerich. Mr. Ballou, would you like to speak to Article 39? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Richard Ballou. I'm a resident of Hampton. I live at 9 Birch Road. As the article clearly states, Zachary Fisher was the founder of the Fisher House Foundation in 1990 and by 1991 the Fisher House Foundation had constructed uh, two homes. One of Mr. Fisher's nephew, Mr. Ken Fisher, has been running the Fisher House organization since 2006 with his wife Elizabeth. At the present time the Fisher House organization has a proposal to build a facility in West Haven, Connecticut in 2015 and at the medical facility in Togus, Maine. The Veterans Administration is responsible for determining the need of where these comfort homes will be built near these facilities. And the need is identified by the percentage of patients and the needs of the patients in that geographical location, the travel requirements for families who need to travel, and the capability of the hospital where a home is planned. As most of you may know, the motto of the Veterans Administration is to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his child. And that was voiced by Abraham Lincoln at his second inaugural, and it was adopted by the Veterans Administration in 1959. The Veterans Administration has five polytrauma facilities in the United States, and these facilities treat patients with multi-trauma conditions. That would include the loss of a limb, severe burns, or the loss of more than one limb. They have been helped in this effort by citizens of the United States who have donated 10,000 free plane tickets to the families who donate their frequent flyer miles to the families of those men and women who have been injured at the battlefront. And over $1 million in scholarships for the children of those who have been injured have been, has been provided. I know that this particular article, to the best of my knowledge, hasn't been proposed anywhere else I, I, uh, by any community. But I would like to point out that American Legion Post 35 in Hampton has provided a sterling example of never forgetting by what they've done up there in providing a memorial for those who have been taken from us in the state of New Hampshire. As you can see, the physical impact is less than 
on the tax rate, uh, and if my calculations are correct, it would represent approximately three dollars on a two thousand two hundred thousand dollar home in Hampton. If my math is wrong, I, I, I stand corrected. I would like to thank everyone for their support to now, and I would like to thank all of the residents who I respectfully ask that the, vet, that the voters of this article extend their, their support and favorable consideration when this goes before the voters. I thank you all so very much. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Blue. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> Fred Rice, 15, Heather Lane. I don't think anybody in this town is a bigger supporter of doing things for our military than I am. I served in the military. I served in combat. I have many, many, many friends who have been severely wounded, who have died, who have lost limbs. I've, got, I've still got very strong connections to the military. The head of the VA is a very personal friend of mine. I was his first commanding officer. This Fisher House Foundation, one element, is headed up by a fellow West Point grad, a guy by the name of Paul Buca, class of 65 from West Point, who received the Medal of Honor. And he was recently mentioned in a rather prominent fundraising effort on behalf of Fisher House. I will, however, tell you that I am strongly opposed to this particular article. This is a charity. This is a donation. The, and and uh, the previous speaker mentioned uh, that certain things that have been donated. Absolutely. I am in favor of donating. And I think that this should remain on a donation basis. But to tell people that you are going to hit their taxes and involuntarily take from them money that you're going to determine where it's going to be spent, whether it's for a good cause or not, is wrong. People can come to this gathering right here and they can come up with any number of really, really, really worthwhile activities and organizations that deserve support. That does not mean that every single citizen in the town should be forced to give money to that particular one. I don't like a lot of the things that are on the other uh, uh, public uh, giveaway uh, uh, article that was in here before. Those are, that is conscripting your money and giving to organizations that you may not like. We should encourage to the maximum extent free will donations to people. And we shouldn't be so cheap as we are. New England is notoriously cheap for this, this type of thing. But to say to people, we're going to tax you, and we're going to use that for a thing that some of us think is a good deal. And I, I do. I really do think this is a wonderful thing to do, and it should be encouraged and supported to the maximum extent possible, but not through the taxation system. So I would encourage you to, you know, if they, if they want to do this, I, th I think I've seen something. Let me back up. I've seen something that this organization has said that they could raise $25,000 in a single small fundraising event. They don't need to go to every single town in the country and raise $25,000. If they raise $25,000 from every town of 16,000 people, they'd have enough money to build New York City all over again. I mean, it'd, it'd be phenomenal. These, these facilities will not go in anywhere near us. They will not benefit our town. They will not provide employment for our town in the process of doing them. Uh, they are well thought out and, and they're, they're well intentioned. But I would urge you to not vote for this and leave it as a free, free will charitable activity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 39? Mr. Jones. No surprise, I was one of the four in the minority in not recommending this. Perhaps it is a surprise that I'm agreeing with Fred Rice. <laughs> the, uh, the Fisher House is such an excellent organization that they are one of two on my personal charity list, them and Wounded Warriors. However, I have a personal policy, and that is that any, any, any charity that takes tax money gets taken off my list. 
And I do that for good reason, because, you know, taxes, as Fred pointed out, I, I like to think of the, the um, you know, the little old lady, the little old man in town that is struggling just to maintain their, their, their independence. They're on the edge. And we start adding taxes, and we were talking about taking their money away from them, making their independence a little less shorter in time. When the Fisher Organization is a well-funded organization, it is not in need of the money. As the proponent pointed out, he's not aware of any, and I'm not aware of them having taken tax money any time. And I hate to see the beginning of them doing so, and I hate for Hampton to be the first one to do that. So please, vote no on this. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Warburton. Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian Warburton, 24 Sanborn Road in Hampton. It's interesting to note that approximately 14 years ago, I and others moved to have the veterans exemption increased with state representatives at that time. And people would call me on the phone knowing that that's money that's taken off the tax rolls because you're increasing the exemption. I'm not a veteran, but I did it and supported it and still do because it was the right thing to do. And back then it was my town as well as it is today. And I bring that up because I find it interesting, one of the prior speakers who receives that veterans exemption, and rightfully so, now looks at something like the Fisher House as a problem for taxpayers to support. Hmm. Didn't we just have an article where we supported all kinds of charitable organizations, rightfully so as well? And I will say this about the Fisher House. I heard about this 10 or 12 years ago on the IMS in the Morning program. This isn't anything new. This is quite an organization that helps these families. And one of the other reasons I'm up here for this article really has little to do with whether or not I was a veteran. But I'm up here because the sponsor of this article, you should know, Mr. Ballou and Mr. DeMarco, are two of the most honorable people in this town. And I will tell you, I respect both of them for doing this. And I urge and congratulate the Budget Committee and Selectmen, by the way, for supporting this. I urge full support of this, and let's keep the message out that this is all of our town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Mr. LeBrand. <coughs> Steve LeBranch. The, the list is endless of charities, okay? This is a wonderful charity, but perhaps next year I'll come in and have a petition article for a couple of my favorite charities, um, the Shriners Burn Institute and this Perkins School for the Blind, because I can make a good case for them as well. And we can, we can uh, then vote on that and, give, and take more tax dollars and support charities. I, I can't do that. Thank you. Blue, and then we'll be done. Wrap up with our um, proponent. One of the things that everyone here believes in is a, is a democracy, and, and for those that may disagree with us, I, I truly welcome that. And I would like to personally thank Mr. Fred Rice for his service. I'm a veteran, <clears throat> and I served with the United States Army, and I was assigned to the 3rd Marine Corps Division in 1968 during the Tet Offensive. And I can thoroughly understand the position that uh, Mr. Rice takes when he has been through a lot, and uh, there are times when I, when I would like to say that if my mind could only forget what my eyes have seen. But I have talked to the people at the Fisher House Foundation, and they have represented that the funds will remain in New England. And that's been an assurance that was given to me by Mr. Brian Gaughan of the Fisher House Foundation because I called and I asked about that. So. 
I thank everybody and uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blue. All right, we're going to um, move on to Article 40. Article 39 will appear on the ballot as it is printed.